Executive Suit Corporation heads gathered together in a series of social events that became known as Gary Dinners. At the meetings, the heads of participating corporations announced the prices they intended to charge and the wages to pay, but made no promises to abide by either. The architect of the dinners, Judge Albert H. Gary, chairman of the board of the United States Steel Corporation, saw them as a lawful way to stabilize steel prices. The government agreed that dinners stabilized prices, but took a different view of their legality and brought suit in 1911, asking the court to dissolve U.S. Steel as an illegal monopoly. In 1915, the trial court held that dinners amounted to price fixing, but that U.S. Steel's resort to them only proved that the firm could not control steel prices on its own, and therefore could not have monopolized the industry. In 1920, the Supreme Court affirmed. These dinners led to, among other things, a more widespread growth of legal trusts throughout other industries, many of which are tarpa fought to disband, as shown here. Upton Sinclair wrote the book The Jungle, which revealed the truth behind what went on in the meat packaging industry. Traces of human meat and spoiled beef were found in packaged meat meant to be shipped across America. This leads to acts from Congress such as the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act. Between 1900 and 1915, more than 15 million immigrants from both Europe and Asia arrived to the United States by going through Angel and Ellis Island. Ellis Island suffered from a devastating fire after its first five years of service. These islands serve as inspection stations where, upon arriving, immigrants were thrown into the masses where they were questioned about their livelihood. The ill were separated from their loved ones and locked up for potentially months until they were healthy again, earning the island's nickname of Heartbreak Island. Upon arrival, immigrants almost immediately received jobs. These jobs had very poor conditions and very poor wages. This led to immigrants revolting and going on strike against their employers. Most of the immigrants were unskilled workers from Eastern and Southern Europe, and found jobs working in steel mills, slaughterhouses, and as construction crews in the mill towns and industrial cities. Starting in the 1880s, labor unions aggressively promoted restrictions on immigration, especially on Chinese and other Asians. The basic fear was that large numbers of unskilled, low-paid workers would defeat the union's efforts to raise wages through collective bargaining. The progressives strongly promoted Americanization programs, designed to modernize the recent immigrants and turn them into model American citizens. Eventually, Many immigrants grew tired of their discrimination and revolted against their American oppressors, causing vast amounts of riots in locations such as New York and Chicago. One of the earliest of these reformers was Sarah Begley, cream cheese, cream cheese, who fought for shorter work days, which would later be granted by no other than Henry Ford in his $5 workday, which also included only working for eight hours each day.
Silent movies also played a major role in American culture during the early 1900s. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm taking her to the curbs, and that was just a fraction of the progressives' era. Please join us next week for the civil rights movement. A scar on America's past, or a beacon of her passion for justice.